Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Another round of thunderstorms is possible. It's a level one risk. I'll show you what time to expect those and what you'll see. Crews are cleaning up after yesterday's storm brought down trees across our viewing area. We'll take you to some hard hit neighborhoods. Also, let's give you a live look at the United Center in Chicago, where tens of thousands of Democrats are gathered. We are just hours away from the kickoff of the Democratic National Convention, a rundown of what you can expect today. The buzz of chainsaws can be heard across our viewing area after last night's storms and also strong storms again expected in the forecast this evening for most of our viewing area. Good afternoon to you. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Thanks for joining us. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is out on the WRL weather patio with a look at who is under this level one risk. It's really from Fayetteville and Clinton northward up toward the Virginia line and eastward closer to the coast. It's a little different than yesterday. Yesterday we had a level two risk for severe storms and we did end up with some trees down and some damage across our area. This is likely to be a bit more isolated today. We take a look at future cast and we'll kick things off. I'm standing out here on the patio and it's beautiful. There are a few puffy cumulus clouds out here. It's a little on the warm side, uh, but you can see that we're pretty dry all the way up until around the mid to latter part of the afternoon. Uh, right here is five o'clock and you can see that first uh, sort of line of showers and thunderstorms moving closer to Durham around 5 o'clock. So it could be something that impacts the evening commute. By 8 o'clock, those are mainly off to the east and at that point really beginning to weaken, but maybe not completely over until around 10 to 11 p.m. But only isolated chances of any of those becoming severe. And you can see that threat as it goes up to 40% chance right around uh, the evening commute through dinner time, and then that chance levels off. Once all this moves out, we are in for some glorious weather cooling temperatures, lower humidity, a nice little taste of fall. I'll show you how it will feel and how long it will last coming up. Cannot wait. Elizabeth, thank you. Cleanup begins in Johnson, Johnston County today after severe storms caused trees to come down late yesterday. WRL's Destiny Patterson is live in Benson. Destiny, what are you seeing? Renee, I want you to take a look at this car. This is the damage that we're seeing here in Johnston County. This car, the man who owns this car tells me that it was actually his daughter's and he initially had plans to sell it and then they decided instead to repair it. I want you to take a look at all of the glass here that is shattered around the car from when a large tree fell on it. Take a look. This is where that tree came from. You can see where it broke from its stump there and look at how large this tree is. The man who owns this property here tells me that they haven't had issues like this since they moved to North Carolina in 2012. So this was quite the shock. I wanna show you some of the other downed trees that are here in the area on this property here. And this is just one home that we came to where we saw all of this damage. The owner here tells me that they were lucky that they actually were not home when that storm came through here. We were coming back from getting groceries and it was going crazy and you know the, the wind and rain was nuts but we were in here and even had we been here we would have lost another car we would have lost the truck because there was a limb right down where we usually park the truck so he's already started the cleanup out here you can see some of these large trees that he has already started to cut up and it's pretty incredible to think that this actually was not a tornado. Our meteorologists here at WREL say that there were high winds, but there was actually no rotation. So this was considered a microburst according to the National Weather Service. I want you to also take a look at this hen house here, completely destroyed. He says that he will have to start all over in terms of building this. And we have seen the, the hens here that he has on this property that have actually gotten out and away. So we will continue to monitor this. This is only some of the work that he has to do here. And in our later newscast, I'll give you a closer look at that cleanup. Destiny Patterson, WRL News, Johnson County. Potentially very close to tornado force there. And we're also trying to find out if anyone was injured when a tree crashed into a home in Fayetteville. This was a scene on Dobbins Holmes Road this morning as crews removed what was left of that tree. Drone 5 gives you a bird's eye view of the damage left behind when that tree sliced through the roof of a home. You can be a WRL weather watcher. Just show us what conditions are like where you live. If you have photo or video to share with us, go to WRL.com slash weather watchers and we may share it on TV or feature it online. 
And happening right now in the WRA Live Center, some sad news out of Smithfield. A 90-year-old was hit and killed by a car earlier this morning around 9.30. We have video from the WRA Breaking News Tracker. You can see the heavily damaged car here. The 90-year-old man was riding a bike on Venture Drive around 9.45. The accident closed the road for almost two hours. The heavily damaged bike in the middle of, was in the middle of the road nearly 100 yards away from where that car was. The car's driver was also transported to an area hospital with injury. Charges were pending the outcome of the investigation. The identity of the victim has not been released. The woman accused of helping a convicted murderer escape last week will face a judge today. Jacobia Crisp's first appearance is scheduled for two this afternoon in Orange County Court. WRL's Monica Casey is live in Hillsboro. Monica, police say those two only knew each other for a short time. That's right. Investigators say the relationship between Ramon Alston and Jacobia Crisp only began about two months ago, even though he's been in prison for more than seven years at this point. Crisp is now out on bond and she'll be here facing a judge. Her bond for felony aid and a bet and felony harboring escapee was $30,000 and she was out of jail hours after her arrest on Friday in Alamance County. As for Alston, he is now at the Granville Correctional Institute, which the state says is the most secure facility in the prison system. Previously, he was in the Birdie County facility where he racked up 16 infractions, almost all for either possession of an audio video device, substance possession, or unauthorized tobacco use. Alston was convicted for the murder of a one-year-old girl in Chapel Hill years ago. Investigators have not yet said exactly how he escaped, but we could learn more details of how Crisp is accused of helping him later in court here today. Live in Hillsboro, Monica Casey, WREL News. Right now you're looking at a live picture of the United Center in Chicago. It is day one of the Democratic National Convention. Nearly 50,000 visitors are expected to attend the convention, including about 4,000 delegates. Today's theme is For the People. Democrats used former President Trump's own hotel in downtown Chicago to lambaste him and his running mate. Phrases like Harris, Walls, Joy and Hope and Project 2025 HQ were projected on that building. Project 2025 refers to a conservative blueprint for the next Republican president, one that Trump has repeatedly distanced himself from. NBC's Peter Alexander tells us what we can expect. <laughs> This morning, Vice President Harris is preparing to accept her party's nomination, but not before Democrats first honor President Biden tonight. Punctuated sources tell NBC News by a pass the torch moment where President Biden and Harris are expected to share the stage. The new Democratic ticket touring Pennsylvania Sunday. When you know what you stand for, you know what to fight for. Harris and Governor Tim Walz revealing their new campaign buses and responding to former President Trump's latest personal attacks. Anybody who's about beating down other people is a coward. This is what strength looks like. Mr. Trump in the state a night earlier bashing Democratic policies as fascist, calling immigrants who enter the U.S. illegally savage monsters and lashing out at his rival, insulting Harris's appearance. They said, no, her biggest advantage is that she's a beautiful woman. I'm going, huh, I never thought of that. I'm better looking than she is. If you have a policy debate for president, he wins. Donald Trump, the, provo uh, the provocateur, the, uh, the showman, may not win this election. New polls show Harris is surging, narrowly leading Mr. Trump among likely voters nationwide, though still within the margin of error. And they're neck and neck in the key battleground states. I very much consider us the underdog. We have a lot of work to do to earn the vote of the American people. Here in Chicago, thousands of protesters are expected to converge on the city this week, some already taking to the streets. Inside the United Center tonight, President Biden will lead a lineup of top Democrats. Appearing tomorrow, Doug Emhoff, who could become America's first first gentleman, as well as former First Lady Michelle Obama and former President Obama. Then on Wednesday, former President Clinton, before Tim Walz accepts the vice presidential nomination, all leading up to the main event, Vice President Harris's turn in the spotlight Thursday night.
That's Peter Alexander reporting. Meantime, former President Donald Trump will hold a rally at 3 o'clock in York, Pennsylvania. Trump says he plans to visit battleground states during each day of this week's Democratic National Convention. That'll include a stop in North Carolina on Wednesday in Asheboro. Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, is expected to deliver remarks on the economy in about an hour at an event in Philadelphia. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is back in Israel today, pushing for a ceasefire agreement to end the war in Gaza and free the hostages by the end of this week. This is his ninth mission to the Middle East since the conflict began. Blinken says this may be the best chance to get an agreement after 10 months of war. He met for two and a half hours one-on-one -on -one with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. NBC News has learned that Hamas believes the proposal on the table laid out by the U.S. makes two many concessions to the Israeli side. Coming up next at noon, legendary talk show host Phil Donahue has died. A look back at his career as a pioneer in daytime TV. Also, strong storms and torrential rain left a mark on the Northeast this weekend. The flooding and mudslides still causing a mess in the region. Plus, repairing a Wilson County school after Tropical Storm Debbie. At 1230, what we expect to hear about the reopening of Springfield Middle School. Keep watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257. Legendary talk show host Phil Donahue has died. Donahue's family says he died Sunday following a long illness. He was surrounded by family, including his wife of 44 years, writer and activist Marlo Thomas. Donahue pioneered a new format for daytime TV as a host of the Phil Donahue Show from 1967 to 1996. In May, President Joe Biden awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Phil Donahue was 88. A man is in the hospital after he was stabbed last night in South Raleigh. This is video from the WRL Breaking News Tracker. And police, as they've responded to Marble Street just after 11 p.m., they found a man with stab wounds. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Police were also investigating a gas station on South Saunders Street nearby at the same time. It's not clear at this time what exactly happened there. A man is in custody, though, for the original attack. The highway patrol says alcohol was a factor in a deadly high-speed chase that ended in a crash in Cumberland County. This started just after 1130 Saturday night on State Highway 87 in Harnett County. The highway Patrol says they clocked an Acura going 110 miles per hour. The driver made it to Spring Lake, then drove around traffic that was stopped at a red light. The Acura crashed into a Honda Accord, killing the passenger, Delfina Sanchez Eusebio. The Honda's driver, Ismail Apollonar Heredia, is at Cape Fear Valley Hospital right now with serious injuries. The driver of the Acura, Darren Powell, is in critical condition. Powell's a murder suspect also in the 2023 shooting death of Barbara Adair in Cumberland County. At least one man is dead. Six other people are missing after a luxury yacht sank off the coast of Sicily. A tornado hit the 183-foot yacht this morning. 22 people were on board, including 10 crew members and 12 passengers, some of whom are Americans. Emergency services rescued 15 people, including a child who was flown to a children's hospital in Palermo. Strong storms pounded the East Coast over the weekend, causing flooding, road closures, and mudslides. Meanwhile, Ernesto is still churning up dangerous surf on Atlantic beaches. NBC's George Solis shows us the damage in Danbury, Connecticut. And this right here, the power of that one in 1,000 year flood. Take a look at this parking lot that we're into, this housing development. You can see the road looking more like a creek here, this parking lot. The road just washed away and now into the street here, creating a muddy mess. And that's much the case for a lot of roads, about a dozen or so here in this region alone. In neighboring Oxford, Connecticut, there's actually reports of a man that may be missing as a result of this storm, in the aftermath of the storm, I should say, in Southbury, Connecticut. Some amazing images there of a good Samaritan rescuing a man and his dog from those rising floodwaters. The wild weather really just taking a hold of the much of, of the weekend. In Alabama, intense winds causing one of those bouncy castles to actually fly away. Today, 
A lot of the concern for anyone going to the beach is those dangerous and deadly rip currents, something to keep an eye out for. Here in Danbury, again, the road's a mess. You can see some of the crews here beginning to assess the damage. Homeowners obviously will have to do the same. No reports of damage in this area as far as uh, the people, but obviously a lot of concern for what the assessment of the damage is going to look like. Some of this complicating all of it is going to be the, the weather. It's uh, looking like it might rain this afternoon here in this region, complicating things for some of the cleanup efforts. But the residents out here just grateful the damage was not worse. Back to you. That was George Solis reporting those storms battering areas up and down the Atlantic coast. And we could have some more storms on the way later. You know, that, that was not even from Debbie as went through and moved us a whole different system coming through. And we may get a little more tonight. Spotty last night caused some damage. Elizabeth Gardner out in a glorious garden setting on the patio right now. <laughs> Yeah, it feels pretty good. And I think, you know, everybody would like to just kind of jump past what's going to happen this evening straight to what's going to happen starting tomorrow. We have some absolutely gorgeous weather in our forecast. We're going to see our temperatures dropping down a little bit and the folks are going to want to get outside. And so, you know, we tend to think of our pollen season as being, you know, during the spring and we definitely have, have the worst of it there. But if you've noticed, you know, you're a little uh, sniffly or, you know, eyes are itching or throat's itching, it may be the weeds. Ragweed and sagebrush are uh, moderate for today and of course trees and grasses are low. Let's talk a little bit more about that severe weather potential that we have uh, across our area and it's definitely looking like we have that uh, potential of course as we get through the next uh, 24 hours or so. So we'll uh, check out that uh, that chance of some of those uh, thunderstorms and you can see we're going to be tracking a front that cold front's going to come sweeping through here. There's a disturbance to the north and west of it and that's going to bring us that chance for some scattered thunderstorms this evening at the beginning of the newscast. We walked through the timeline for that. And once we get that through, we'll see the humidity and the temperatures dropping and you'll you should notice it even by tomorrow morning. So there's a, again a look at the outline of where we'll see those chances for severe storms. Uh, most of the viewing area, just a few of our southwest counties not in it. It's going to start in the northern part of the viewing area. And so by the time those storms make it farther south, they're just not likely to uh, be strong anymore. We'll walk through future cast again. And uh, right now we're looking at gorgeous conditions out here at the gardens. We're partly cloudy. I will see that little wave of rain that comes through and it's over by about 10 or 11. Moving through the triangle, say between 7 and 9 o'clock. We take a look at the gardens and it's pretty out here. It's pretty quiet right now, but I think as the weather starts to turn a little bit cooler and less humid, it's going to get a bit more crowded. Still lots and lots of things in bloom out here. It's a, it's a beautiful place. Right now it's 84 degrees with a dew point of 68. We'll see 88 this afternoon in Raleigh, 87 in Durham, and 90 in Fayetteville. And of course we're looking at a nice big drop in our humidity. It's on the moderate to steamy tolerable side today. It jumps down to comfy and refreshing by the time we get to tomorrow through Friday and then it may begin to climb a little bit over the weekend. The last time we had more than two days with a comfortable dew point was way back in May and early June, May 29th to June 2nd. So nice to kind of see that here in August. We don't always see it in August, but as we get into September, we do see it typically uh, more and more. Thursday morning, we're going to drop to 59 degrees. That's going to almost be like jacket weather if you're you know wearing short sleeves like this 69 is our normal low that 59 of course will be 10 degrees below it 61 friday 62 saturday i'll tell you what behind this cloud that just moved over me with this tiny bit of a breeze it actually feels very comfortable 89 is our normal high and we'll drop down to 80 on a wednesday it will be in the low 80s tuesday wednesday thursday friday uh, we're gonna have nice weather for the super moon you could see it this morning now tonight at least during the evening we may not see it because of the rain and thunderstorms but first thing tomorrow morning. Take a look. Um, it's at perigee, which is which means it's at its closest point to Earth in its orbit. And we're going to see four supermoons this month, September, October and November. And it only appears 7% larger than a regular moon, but it also appears 30% brighter. And here's a look. I love this. Shannon Archer from Raleigh sent us this right over Memorial Auditorium with that beautiful moon. We love to see your weather watcher photos. Go to WRL.com and send us some. Once we get toward the weekend, and we start to warm up just a little bit more. So enjoy this pretty weather that we'll have coming up. I'm going to talk a bit more about where Ernesto is now. 
Elizabeth, thanks. Jeff, you can relate to this with two <laughs> girls in college. College tuition is expensive enough, but incoming students can expect to pay hundreds, if not thousands, on tech devices and things you want in your dorm room. Today at 5.30, Five on Your Side's Keely Arthur shares Consumer Reports' top discounts for August. I'll be listening, <laughs> no doubt. And Hurricane Ernesto stayed offshore, but the North Carolina coast still saw some damage after a home collapsed into the ocean. What other homes are at risk? That's today at four. And the love affair is over between eBay and American Express. Why the online auction house decided to stop accepting the credit card. Plus, a new report reveals surprising data about vehicle recalls. The number of people who actually put off getting those repairs. Egg prices are rising again as bird flu is limiting supply. July marked the third straight month. Prices rose year over year, up 19 percent. Egg price inflation became a focus during the pandemic when lots of people were cooking at home. Analysts say egg demand is considered inelastic, meaning people will usually still buy eggs regardless of price. Check your freezer. Packages of chicken products from Purdue Foods are being recalled over concerns that they may contain metal. Purdue Foods recalled about 165,000 pounds of 22-ounce Simply Smart Organics breaded chicken breast nuggets and chicken breast tenders. The 29-ounce Butcher Box Organic Chicken Breast Nuggets are also part of the recall. All products have best of use by March 25th, 2025 dates. You are urged not to eat these products. Return them to the store. More than half of all Fortune 500 companies now consider AI a risk factor. That's according to a Forbes report. It shows about 56% of the businesses flag the technology as a concern. Some companies cite fear of keeping pace with rivals who are better at exploiting the technology. Others express concerns about AI's potential impact on human rights, employment, and privacy. eBay is no longer accepting American Express credit cards. The online auction company says the processing fees just aren't worth it. While Visa and MasterCard charge merchants between 1.5% and 2.5% for the total transaction, American Express charges between 2.5% and 3.5% eBay is also calling for more regulations on transaction fees from credit card companies. Some people put off making repairs to vehicles with potentially dangerous issues. According to a global data company, almost 30 percent of vehicle owners delayed getting repairs after receiving a notice of a recall. The report includes owners who purchased a vehicle with the model year of 2013 or newer. Manufacturers are required to notify vehicle owners of a recall by mail within 60 days of reporting it to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Raleigh has a new program to beef up affordable housing. We'll explain how they're making it work by taking the land out of the equation. Plus. Today, Wilson County school leaders will share an update here at Springfield Middle School after an EF3 tornado touched down. A look at the restoration efforts underway. And a look at your winning NC Education Lottery numbers on your screen right now. We'll be right back. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Today, we expect to learn more about the plan for restoring Springfield Middle School with the new school year scheduled to start a week from today. The Wilson County School was badly damaged by an EF3 tornado earlier this month. WRL's Laura Levine spent the morning in Lucama, where today school leaders could talk about the plans to rebuild areas that are damaged. It was less than two weeks ago when an EF3 tornado touched down here at Springfield Middle School. Today, now you can see a fence has been installed around the building and that roof that was pulled apart from the tornado now covered as repair work still underway. Superintendent Lane Mills says that he plans to share an update on the progress to get students back inside this school building. The sixth and seventh grade wings of the school suffered immense damage to the walls and roof and the classrooms and other rooms on those wings are a total loss. Builder Services of NC has been working to remove excess water and secure the roof and walls that were damaged. The company determined 75% of the structure is safe 
and that students can return at the start of the school year, which begins next Monday. They plan to bring in mobile units and also utilize the eighth grade wing and core of the school while the two damaged wings are rebuilt. When you walk in, it's be very little drywall left. Um, the roof is being temporarily repaired right now to keep moisture out. Um, but it is very heavily damaged and it'll be walled off where you won't be able to access it. And school orientations are also still scheduled to go as planned tomorrow. Those are going to be held at Lacama Middle School. The board will meet tonight at 630. Laura Levine, WRL News in Wilson County. Also in Wilson County, people there held an event in Rocky Mount to raise money for the family of a woman and her six-year-old daughter who were killed last Sunday. Kiara Massenberg and her daughter Zoe were shot in what investigators say was a murder-suicide. Sunday's fundraiser was held at DeBerg's in Rocky Mount. We had the tragic death of a young mother and her daughter for something really senseless to all of us. There's something we would ne never, uh, no one of us would ever understand why. So we just decided to come out today to support the family, help them with anything they could need, let them know that the community is here for them. We just making it day by day. And we just, everybody keeping us in the prayer is helping us. And folks who attended were asked to wear purple. There will be a vigil also Thursday as well in honor of the mother and daughter. Just hours before President Biden is scheduled to deliver his keynote speech at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, a trio of Republican-led committees released a nearly 300-page report on impeachment hearings. The report argues that President Biden engaged in impeachable conduct, but it does not make a formal recommendation for the House to move forward with impeachment. The White House has dismissed the impeachment inquiry as a stunt and encouraged House Republicans to move on. Former New York Representative George Santos is expected to plead guilty today to federal charges. The fraudulent activity stems from his 2022 midterm campaign. The Republican lawmaker was expelled from the House last year. Home prices steadily increase for years. Now both the city of Raleigh and nonprofits are working together to find ways to provide more affordable housing. A key piece of that is Raleigh Area Land Trust. WRL's Eric Miller explains how it works to put home ownership within reach for more people. James Watson can fix almost any problem. These are the certifications I have here. A lifelong maintenance man with decades of experience from the airborne onwards, there's not a lot he can't do. I built this myself. But one problem that's been beyond the reach of his tools, home ownership. Well... Being a rental, it's not good. Beyond his reach, at least until last year. Um, happy. Just over a year ago, Watson was selected to be the very first person to buy a home through the Raleigh Area Land Trust. I've never thought that I would be able to afford one. We sell the house and retain ownership of the land. That also has the benefit of keeping the, that model keeps the property affordable permanently by taking land out of the equation also brings the purchase price down for the current buyer. RALT's executive director, Kevin Campbell, says the program is targeted to low and moderate income families in Raleigh and Wake County and is expanding quickly. Yes, yeah, so far we have two. Uh, a humble start, uh, we, sold, we purchased and sold two homes in Southeast Raleigh in 2023. And right now we have 22 units in the kind of development process 18 of those in Raleigh and four to be coming along. The land trust model means homeowners do have to pay a nominal lease and face some responsibilities and restrictions. You know, if a home buyer wants not not cosmetic changes, but like if they wanted to make an addition to their home or something like that, just really an informing thing. My job is to keep the land up. For James Watson, that's a small price to pay for all this. This is the living room area. Oh, uh, this is a lot of my little quiet time. A place he can not only find peace, but leave a piece of for the next generation. Everything came together. Just like anything that you build, you got to put it together. In Raleigh, Eric Miller, WRAL News. The Raleigh land Area Land Trust needs to build up its donor base to fund its program work and operations. Donations can be made directly through their website, ralt.org.
North Carolina students may not have school issued laptops in the future. Most school systems and charter schools say they don't have the money to replace the laptops once they break down. Schools bought most of them during the COVID-19 pandemic using the temporary federal stimulus package, spending hundreds of millions of dollars. That money has almost run out. Find out more about what schools are doing now at the education section of WREL.com. People are making vacations a priority. We'll run down the top destinations this fall and the one popular spot for Christmas. Parts of Connecticut are dealing with a thousand year rain event. The flooding that's caused dangerous conditions and with more rain on the way. Stay in the know with the WRL News app. Get breaking news and weather alerts and watch our live newscasts right on your phone or streaming device. Welcome back. It is 1238 as we look live at Lake Gaston from one of our uh, newer cameras, a different angle of Lake Gaston. You can see the uh, boats there awaiting to be launched. But look at those beautiful puffy clouds and it feels pretty nice out there. It's going to feel even better later this week. You're watching WRL News on YouTube TV and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. Today, Wake County leaders will consider buying a property for a permanent drop-in shelter for the community's homeless population. Currently, white flag shelters open in the county when it's 32 degrees or below. The new shelter will not just be for white flag nights, but for any time someone needs a place to stay. It would house about 100 people. Happening today, we are expecting to hear updates regarding the Go Raleigh Access Program. That's the city's ADA paratransit service. We're expecting to learn more about a program that provides free rides for low-income households. It comes as the city reintroduces fares to its transit system. The public meeting will be at the Chavis Community Center from 6 to 8 tonight. WRL investigates nearly $200 million in taxpayer dollars to send kids to private or religious schools. My taxes for my kids, I would like to just allocate those funds to the school that we choose for them to be at. The state school voucher program is growing. Tomorrow at 6, WRL investigates back to school where our money is going and why some argue it may be better spent on something else. We are months away from new leadership overseeing your child's public education. We know you may have concerns on how this could affect your kids, and we want to hear your thoughts. Check out the QR code on the bottom corner of your screen. Point your phone's camera at it to get a link to a new WRL survey. We want to know what you think is important for the next state superintendent of public instruction to focus on and what qualifications you think are most important. The survey only takes a few minutes. You can also search back to school on WRL.com and you'll find the survey at the top. Widespread flooding and washed out roads and the worst may not be over. How people in Connecticut are dealing with deadly conditions there weather wise. Labor Day is coming up quickly, and that usually marks the end of summer travel. Not so fast. Why agents say they are seeing an increase in leisure travel. Summer isn't over yet, and the leisure travel industry is rebounding. Kelly Saberi takes a look at some of the top destinations. As summer winds down, travelers are embarking on last chance vacations and planning future trips for next season as the leisure travel industry rebounds. If you look at where the travel industry is in terms of leisure travel compared to 2019, well, Tourism Economics is reporting that it's up 126 percent, which is great news. Travel Network Virtuoso's research shows more travelers are prioritizing luxury trips and rare experiences. When you look at where Virtuoso is at, representing the luxury end of the market, we are at 213 uh, percent of where we were in 2019, which just goes to show you that people are still traveling and, um, and willing to invest in having those really high-end personalized experiences. For those headed overseas, Virtuoso flagging countries like Italy, France, Mexico, the UK and Spain as top destinations. You're seeing so much demand for uh, for Europe. Italy is always a top destination. 
France is coming on strong uh, this fall. Canada's up significantly. Festive season bookings are up 32 percent since last year, with Americans planning future vacations at higher rates than the past few years. Holiday hotspots include Mexico, Hawaii, Anguilla, Costa Rica and St. Bart's. St. Bart's is really, really strong. I think everyone's headed to St. Bart's for this, this Christmas. That was Kelly Saberi reporting. Other trends include legacy travel with the children of millennials traveling around the world starting in 2025. People in Connecticut are bracing for more rain today after several towns were hit by a 1,000 year rain event. At least two people are dead. At least 100 people have been evacuated from unsafe conditions. The heavy rainfall led to mudslides and washed out roads. Hundreds of people are without power as well. So far, there have been no reports of any injuries. This next video you will want to see. A violent thunderstorm caused a bounce house to fly into the air in Alabama. It was caught on video right there. The powerful storm appeared to catch everyone by surprise as people ran for cover in that heavy rain. And then the bounce house just gets airborne there and rolls right down the street. Fortunately, no one was hurt there either. Some parts of the viewing area could see heavy rain later, but look, we've got beautiful sunshine and blue skies out there. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is enjoying the weather out on the WRO weather patio, Elizabeth. As long as there's a cloud covering the sun, it's very comfortable out here. But if you're in the direct sun, it feels pretty hot. That will change, though, over the next few days. We're looking at the potential for a few isolated thunderstorms this afternoon coming from the northwest heading southeast. We're also watching at Ernesto uh, rapidly moving away uh, up into the North Atlantic where it will eventually fall apart. Uh, once we get into tomorrow and uh, Wednesday in particular, it's going to feel like a little sneak peek of September. So looking forward to that. Here's a live look at the gardens right now. And a here comes that sun again under that sun. It feels pretty warm out here. I'm pretty quiet too. We're not seeing a lot of folks out here right now, but maybe later in the week when our temperatures cool down. We have a cold front that's sliding to and off the coast right now. Notice just to the north and west starting to see that line of showers and thunderstorms form up just say north of Asheville, west of Richmond. We'll see that rolling through here uh, this evening, say starting around the time of the evening commute all the way through maybe like 10 or 11 o'clock. And here again is a look at our uh, area where we have that severe weather threat. And it is for most of the viewing area. We'll roll through future cast again, and you can see right around uh, 5 or 6 o'clock, we start to see those uh, showers moving into the area, and some of those may end up being strong to severe. We had a good bit of severe weather yesterday, but that was a level 2 risk. This is going to be a level 1 risk, so the potential for wind damage will be a little bit less today, but certainly would not be surprising to see a few severe storms and maybe one or two of those that uh, do produce some wind damage. And once that moves on by, we're going to see a nice flow coming out of the northwest, and that will allow cooler drier air to move in. It should feel a lot more comfortable uh, for the next few days. Today is going to be the best chance of rain for the next uh, four or five days. We're nice and dry at least through the weekend. Uh, we'll take a, another look at Hurricane Ernesto still hanging around out there. As a matter of fact, interestingly enough, it gained five miles per hour of uh, speed uh, around the center of circulation. Uh, when we were checking in with it earlier this morning, it had winds at 85 miles per hour. It's back up to 90. So it is uh, it's still a hurricane out there. Moving pretty fast, though. Moving northeast at 28 miles per hour, it is flying. We'll take a look at the uh, at the uh, the path of the storm, and you can see it's uh, it's moving along, but it does stay fairly powerful. It stays off the coast of Canada, though, off those maritime provinces, so it shouldn't be a big deal for folks there. We still have a high rip current danger. We had a very high rip current danger, of course, over the weekend. That does continue today, so keep that in mind if you happen to have weekdays off and you're thinking about heading to the beach. 41 rescues at least over the weekend, as many as 35 of those at Riceville Beach alone. So it's a serious situation, and it will remain that way for the next several days. Ah, the, the beautiful story here in our weather is this. Check it, check it out. Tomorrow's high will be 83. The morning low tomorrow will be 66, but then the next day 62, and then Thursday morning 59. That's going to feel really nice. Nice low temperatures, nice, nice low dew points, low humidity until we get to the weekend, and then it begins to creep up just a little bit, and there's some indications that next week week are going to be fairly hot again. It's kind of it's really hard to take that step back to the heat and humidity once you get a taste of what it's going to feel like in September, but it's not quite September. It's coming. Thanks, Elizabeth. Forget about art imitating life. Art is imitating art at the London Zoo. Why officials replaced a mural by the elusive artist Banksy. We wrap things up with a look at a few of the headlines we are following for you today. 
We've seen several trees come down across our area after storms last night, including this one in Fayetteville. This was the scene on Dobbins Holmes Road this morning as crews removed what was left of the tree. Drone 5 gave you a bird's eye view of the damage left behind when that tree sliced through the roof of a home. We're working to learn if anyone was injured. The woman accused of helping a convicted murderer escape last week will face a judge today. Jacobia Crisp's first appearance is scheduled for two this afternoon in an Orange County court. Investigators say the relationship between Crisp and Ramon Alston only started two months ago, even though he's been in prison for seven years. We'll bring you updates from court on our evening news. A 90 year old man was hit and killed by a car in Smithfield this morning. He was riding his bike on Venture Drive around 945 when he was hit. The incident closed the road for nearly two hours. The car's driver was taken to an area hospital with injuries. Charges are pending the outcome of the investigation. The name of the victim and driver were not released. Stargazers have plenty to look forward to with the next full moon happening tonight. NASA officials say the moon will look full for three days. And this full moon here also will be a super moon, a seasonal blue moon. The moon, of course, won't be the color blue. The seasonal blue moon is the third full moon in a season with four full moons. A Banksy art piece has been removed from the London Zoo, but not because it's unwanted. The mural features a gorilla and other animals appearing to escape from the zoo. It gained traction with visitors who've come in mobs to catch a glance of this piece. Now the zoo says it will be removed and taken into safekeeping. Two other pieces in the series have been defaced since the beginning of the month. Operators say they are grateful to Banksy for putting wildlife in the spotlight. His pieces typically have been created to make political statements in the past. Our pet of the day comes to us from ARF. Jax is a special